Well, I asked my mum quite directly. The bar that I own, and my, my mother and I own, it's right on the coast. It's about 100 metres away from the actual sea. It's the deepest part of uh, of the ocean that surrounds Jamaica is where where my where the land is. So if it if it was to raise, uh, according to uh, global warming, the global warming scientific model theory, if that was to go up, then my um, my land would be completely swamped. And not only that, um, a lot of people in that area would lose farmland, would lose everything else. Obviously, if if the theory of global warming is is correct, um, then obviously there's the the, the seas warm up more, you get more hurricanes. And it disrupts, people don't come along to to uh, to the Caribbean so often because they're worrying about if they get caught up in a hurricane and things like that. Because the recession over there has hit them very, very hard. Obviously, if tourism is such a big earner and, and they make so much money um, from the two-week holiday makers that come from the States or come from Germany or Europe and whatever... And those people are not coming in as much. People are just laid off all the time. So the last thing they're thinking about is climate change. What they're thinking about is pocket change. The infrastructure of, of the place is still... Um, people are still living in existence hand to mouth there. You know, and most of the time I was looking out to see, I thought, Mum, that sea looks really high, man. That sea looks so high. It looks like it's going to swamp us at any point. And I said, hey, that's not my problem. That's your problem. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean that's my problem? Since it's your generation. That, that thing that's happened out there, it won't happen in my lifetime. And, and not only that, she felt it was to her, again, the most pressing issue for her at that time is pocket change. I'm coming from England. I, I've I've got access to the internet. I can find out as much information as I can. You know, I can spout about all this, and I can. I'm fortunate enough to go all over the world and and see these things and and come back, and I can tell a Jamaican, look, you know, da 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 da, and they're going to say to me, look, I haven't got the resources. I just haven't got the resources to even look on the net. You speak of these things and, and, and you're telling me, what can I do? I haven't even got welfare. You guys have got welfare. So what, I, I have to hustle. I have to... That That's my thing. I haven't got time to worry about whether, you know, um, whether the government's going to listen to me because quite blatantly they don't. At the moment, they can't feel climate change. No, none of us can. None of us can. None of, we, we know about it, um, but we cannot feel it. And so, obviously, we're human. We're obviously going to go for something that we feel first and the priority that's first. So I think they may kind of um, understand when something like a big hurricane hits them or have more than four hurricanes hit them is it in a year. But at the same time, when those hurricanes are over, the first thing you're going to think about is their pocket because all of what they've been trying to work for has been wiped off and they have to start again. They may get a little millions, but, you know, coming from aid. Some of them may be able to leave the country as refugees. But the same thing will just go around and around again. And lots of investment with mobile phones now and everything like that. So mobile phones are coming in in a, um, in a big way. It's extortionate what they charge, the Jamaicans. Really? Extortionate, absolute extortion. Um, because they're a monopoly. And uh, one island. See, these threats are more real to Jamaicans than climate change. There's all these monopolies that come into the country, take over, and it's not a Jamaican company. It doesn't seem to filter down to the Jamaican people as quick as it filters to the political class of Jamaica. They still invest, uh, you know, they, they invest in big infrastructures. This is Kingston now. You know, our tastes and what we determine how we've made the corporations in in this in this country massive with our tastes and our needs and our stuff is now going to these developing countries loads and loads of bottles of my mum who has a bar can you imagine she's only a small bar unless you have a big contract 
going with some rave nephew or Appertons or things like that who's going to get rid of your bottles. These are it's simple, simple things that we take for granted about recycling over here that a country like Jamaica and others like it, what can they do about it? What can they do about it? It has to be that human revolution. That's the only revolution that's left. There's no other revolution anywhere on the planet anymore. It's going to work. Um, we can change political systems, we can change economic systems, we can change this, that and the other. It's not going to change until we change, change ourselves. Cause climate change and social justice and, and economic systems and, and political systems are one and the same.